Hello friends and welcome to the Urban Homestanding channel. If today is the first time that you are visiting our channel, we want to extend to you a very warm welcome and invite you to watch any of our over 520 videos that we have arranged for your convenience in playlists as we are confident you are going to find something both interesting and entertaining to watch. If you have been here before, welcome back. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. Here we are in our laundry area and we have been working in this area as you have remembered, we have been here in our channel before. We started with creating our um, uh, countertop here and then we created this nice storage area between our washer and dryer. I am going to put links here for you if you were interested in either of those projects. And off camera, not a project, uh, we actually create a, a little shelf there for storage We've added two uh, upcycled uh, cabinets, right? That was also a project. Also a project. Uh, Mrs. Wizard created this nice interesting pattern on the wall and painted the wall. So the last thing that we have to do right now is cover this uh, arguably ugly uh, fuse box, right? Right. So this is going to be our project today. And part of this is an easy project. I say, we haven't started it yet, but it's the idea that you don't have to do something complex to elevate the, the appearance of an area in your house, right? Right. So stick around and we're going to show you step by step how we did this. So friends, we're going to go from this So here we are in the shop and we've written down our dimensions and for our specific box there are 15 and a half and 22 and 1 8 and we're going to look around and see if we have the, the wood we need to make this project. So we'll start with this piece of scrap and this is, we know now it is not enough because this is only 10 and 3 fourths so this piece of uh, scrap will not do it. We're going to go through our scrap pile and see if we can find a piece. So here we are in the shop and we've written down our dimensions and for our specific box there are 15 and a half and 22 and 1 8 and we're going to look around and see if we have the, the wood we need to make this project. So we'll start with this piece of scrap and this is, we know now it is not enough because this is only 10 and 3 fourths so this piece of uh, scrap will not do it. We are going to go through our scrap pile and see if we can find a piece. So here we are and we have some scrap pieces and this is just not the right dimension. Again, we are falling short, but I hope this will be okay. And let's see our, our width. It is 16 and a fourth, so it is within our 15 and a half. And I think we have the length and we do because we are at uh, 30 and three fourths here. So we, are going to use what we have, we're going to use our scraps to build this project rather than going in the shop, uh, in the store, not the shop, and getting some new. Again, there are a couple of things. We're going to look and make sure that this, because this will be a door, uh, we need to make sure, and you can uh, sight it and see if it is straight enough. I don't expect it to be perfect, but I expect it to be close enough to perfect, and that piece is going to do for us. So the next step is to mark it carefully and start cutting. So here we are and we have some scrap pieces and this is just not the right dimension. Again, we are falling short, but I hope this will be okay. And let's see our, our width. 
It is 16 and a fourth, so it is within our 15 and a half. And I think we have the length, and we do, because we are at uh, 30 and 3 fourths here. So we are going to use what we have. We're going to use our scraps to build this project, rather than going in the shop, uh, in the store, not the shop, and getting some new. Again, there are a couple of things. We're going to look and make sure that this, because this will be a door, uh, we need to make sure, and you can uh, sight it and see if it is straight enough. I don't expect it to be perfect, but I expect it to be close enough to perfect. And that piece is going to do for us. So the next step is to mark it carefully and start cutting. So I marked 15 and a half and I'm going to draw a line here. And we don't need to go all the way through because we are going to rip this part, this small part of the board. 22 and 1 eighth. 22 and 1 /8. So we're making another mark there. And if you want to draw a line, again, we don't need to go all the way across. All right, and now we have our dimensions to cut the door. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let us set our table saw and we're going to do that cut. So we created the data here to account for the dimension of our cover and also our screws and our little uh, handle, what are we going to call it? The little yep. latch, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So we did that in all four pieces. Mm -hmm. We'll only show you one. So we're going to be right back with you. That's it. right. It's okay. It's okay. How is it okay? Because it is. So we have assembled our support structure for the door, and we're going to let this dry, the glue dry. And while this is happening, we are working on creating the barn door, and we're using glue and uh, brad nails to assemble that. One of the tricky parts of making a barn door is that the angles here, unless you are square, and then there will be 45 degrees, are going to be something other than 45 degrees. So uh, an angle marker like this can be used to help you find 
your angle. Yeah. And then you can translate that angle on your wood and also take it to your miter saw and uh, make your cuts. In most cases, your cuts will not be perfect. Right. And that's okay. You just want to be close enough. All right. We got it pretty darn close, though. So we'll be right back, folks. So we're ensuring here that our reveal around is half an inch to give the impression of a frame. And we're using a mechanic square to do that with. And all you have to do is, if you keep one of the uh, faces flush with your edge, then you can push your edge until you're touching your the ruler's edge, and then you know you're exactly half an inch. Find some glue, and then we're going to put our, uh, I guess what in essence will be a frame, or a a pretend frame, a faux frame, and we're going to attach it with brad nails once we make sure that it is the exact reveal we want. So we're going to recheck, as we showed you before, with the same method the reveal. We've made marked lines and we're uh, now putting it on the lines. We're putting it on the lines. Okay. I don't see the line. It's right there. Well, you can use the thing to check, honey, the, the square if you want. And you want to check before you put any brads? Like you want to check this side? or? So, our door is primarily for aesthetics, not for operational reasons. So we're going to try to have it attached to the panel using magnets. We couldn't find neonidium magnets, which were my preference, neonidium magnets. So we use some, uh, what were those? Ceramic. Ceramic magnets. They're pretty strong. They're not as strong as neonidium magnets. And we think six will be enough. If this cannot hold it up to our panel, then we're going to have to purchase some neonidium magnet and replace this. So stick around. We're going to try and do a dry fit and uh, see what else we have to change if we have to change it. And here is our dry fit. As you can see, we have it completely covered in our panel. And now we're going to remove it again to go and finish it, right? And it seems to be working fine, actually. And here is the final product before the finish. And our plan is to make it finish the same way as that. Are we doing that yep. white or stained? No, it's, it's going to be stained. To match the countertop. Right, on so this. everything will, will match. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright folks, let us go and put some stain on and now with our out dry fitting done, our dry fitting done, we are ready to start the staining process. And again, in our case we want to stain it to match the, our existing uh, surroundings. We contemplated painting it white, right? Yeah. But we decided that uh, staining it instead would be a, a good choice. And if we decide to paint it white, we, we put a little bit of uh, uh, sanding on it and we paint it. It is not a permanent thing, right? Or correct instead of right? Well, I think you could change it if you decided you didn't want it. It's, you're not saying that it's not a permanent thing, but it's easily changed out if you decide you don't like that right. look. Now, uh, this will conclude our uh, washroom. No, it's not a washroom. Laundry room. Laundry room. Reno. Right? I thought we still have one more piece to do. What we do? It's the the yeah, bar. The, yeah, it's not bar really goes, a yeah. it's not a project worthy thing, but that's the last thing for it. And it doesn't even really make, make it prettier. It just makes it functional. Yeah. Again, most of the wood we used today was uh, wood we had. It was scraps from other materials on wood. When we say this is a zero cost, it is zero cost to us, right? But if you had to buy this material, this uh, all the wood to build it, I would say you need it about uh, one one by two by eight, right? Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what's your two by eight. One by two by eight. Please. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then what was the other two by three, by eight? The 
Door here, those. Those, no, those are three eighths inch by two inch by three foot long pieces. And we need the three of those, and I don't know how much they were, about $20, all of them, or? Well, we had two, and I, I got three more, so we used, well, we used four, because I think we still have one left. Um, but they were about a buck sixty a piece, I want to say, something like that. So still, with everything bought, this is a sub $50 project, right? Yeah, oh, for sure. Something that you couldn't buy something for fifty dollars in the store. Well, yeah, and definitely not to the size that you needed, or if you did, you'd be very, very lucky to find it right. in that dimension. Now, there are simpler ways to build this project, and you could potentially use a simpler door, not to a barn-style door. Mm -hmm. So you can have it even less expensive and taking less time. But we opted for this. So we'll stick around and we'll show you the finished product. Here is a door option for a, a panel you want to cover or maybe a, a medicine cabinet or something like that that looks rustic and farm style and it's very easy to do. All you do is you, you cut with the curve of your uh, table saw blade at about two inches is what we did here in all spaces is the same uh, in all sides is the same distance right and this transform a very blunt piece of wood which is like this right mm -hmm. to something that has character like this yeah so this would be a very easy to call it upgrade from just a plant mm -hmm. yeah uh, it's a very easy thing to do it gives it dimension and interest of course you can do that more often to, to give the appearance of boards right mm -hmm. just score it in one direction horizontal or vertical but not do, doing both or you can even make signs like you can do horizontal uh, scoring diagonal scoring so mm -hmm. not horizontal uh, and that would be an easy way to create a very interesting door conversely another easy thing would be to do a saker style right for example if we have, if we have not put in our door the diagonal that would be a, a saker style door, right yes I would have gone with a little wider piece, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, when we finish, we have to let it uh, dry for a little bit, and then we're going to do the installation. And here is our mini barn door, uh, fully stained. We have to wait a little bit for the stain to dry, and then as soon as this happens, we're going to put it in its place. So in a few more minutes, you're going to see the, the final outcome of the project. Stick around. Well, friends, here we are, and our door has dried and here it is and you see our existing situation here and there we go this is our complete project we hope you did enjoy this episode uh, there are some interesting options that you have here. We did, uh, I don't know what the right word, we didn't, we considered painting this white to match these cabinets, but we decided we wanted to better match the counter and the self up there. And again, as we mentioned, it is something you can change if you decide you want it looking different. Now, there are some other options here. You can have this door opening on, on hinges rather than have it attached with magnets the way we did, right? You can even have something hanging, like a more of a, a picture kind of thing. Yeah. Versus a... As I said, there are many options and instead, uh, I mean, we happen to do it a fuse box, but many houses have like uh, access panels, like our old house has access panels for plumbing. Mm -hmm. You can make something similar to cover those things, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is a, a rental friendly project, especially the way we did it, because with the mag magnets you do absolutely no alteration to the, to the environment around it, right? And the reason you want it easily accessible, we would not use screws for this project, for example, is because we want it easily accessible in case we have a, a situation where we have to, uh, to reach our fuses. Our breakers, not fuses anymore, right? right? right. But depending on the situation you want, if you want something as, could that be a decor maybe? Somewhere it could, right? Yeah, for sure. You can even decorate it, the, the halves, you know, you can add another diagonal. There are a lot of things that you can take and, and improve on this uh, project. 
And, you know, you could, it could be something as simple as a framed picture, right? That you yeah. could hang there. Well, we wanted something a little more, um, <clears throat> more detailed and more along the lines of the design that we're going for in this space. And because we're going for a specific look, uh, we also, this build is a little more complex than it has to be. It could be much, much simpler than it is right now. Correct, ladies? Yes. Well, anything we need to add for our viewers? No? No, I just, I'm so excited for my laundry room to finally be coming to completion. Is that what's happening? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, we'll ask you to give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, the other button works as well. Share, like, subscribe if you have not done so already, and let us know what else you would like to see in our channel in future ep episodes. From Dr. Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida, and of course the Urban Homestanding channel, stay safe, wash your hands, put your masks on, and we're going to see you soon. Farewell, friends. We're going to do that cut. Do you think you can open this or not? What love? Something seems to bother you. Well, I, I just, I've lost the design in my head from what you're doing, so I'm just waiting. We are cutting, the dimension is 15 and a half, right? And this is here, so we need to cut this part off, because it's longer. And it is 22 and a 90, because this is this dimension. Okay. So we're going to start by cutting these dimensions. So what is left here will be our door. Okay. Okay? And can this be, I mean, can this be the back side, the inside? Or it can be anything you want. I just don't want... It can be anything you want or we can... Uh, I'm going to, we're going to run it through the planer anyway. Okay. But, yes, we're going to make sure and, that there are no... And be careful. Yes, I'm trying not to get hit by the board you're carrying. I wouldn't hit you, love. And what? You had me measure the exact dimensions of... The right. <laughs> so you said something about the rest of it, the, the base, mm -hmm. the, the thing that brings it away from the wall, mm -hmm. being bigger than that? Yes. Okay. So we're going to attach in the underside pieces that they're going to be bigger than this. In other words, they will extend more than this okay. to create the, the reveal. Okay. But they will be... Four sides. Yes, but there will be, of course, what do I want to say? Yeah, they're going to be bigger than this, and the one by the cabinet might be a little thinner mm -hmm. because we cannot go to wall there. Does that make sense? Why does it have to be thinner, though? Because we cannot go to wall, and there is a thickness to the to the metal. Otherwise, it will be. I mean, I mean, if you don't care, I mean, it will be slightly like this. If everything is the same dimension, okay, let's say that this is the, the fuse box, right? Mm -hmm. Here we have a cabinet. Right. Here is not a problem because we're going to start the thing outside, just outside here, right? Mm -hmm. Wall, 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 yeah, cabinet. I, I understand that. Okay. Part. So what, but you said you were going to attach the whole thing with magnets. Right. Now, if the base, the reveal, extends out mm -hmm. and it's on the wall and not on the metal how are we going to make it stick to the metal because the reveal will be attached to the door it's all a false thing the whole reveal when we remove it everything will be coming off no, i understand that okay. okay so this is our reveal mm -hmm. 